Since the start of disc golf back in the 1970s, a lot has changed. Thousands of tournaments have happened, around 90 majors have been held, and countless money distributed to so many different generations. So I thought to myself, competitive disc golf has been around for almost 50 years. With all of these years, there have been plenty of great disc golfers. So why not figure out who the best disc golfer from every decade has been? Even from all the way back in the 1970s, when professional disc golf started, who dominated the first tournaments? And these players whose names we throw around all the time like Climo, Schultz, and Macbeth, how do these players compare to the best of the best from their own time? Well, here's my list for the best player in every decade of disc golf. Here we go, all the way, and I mean all the way back, to the 1970s when the first big tournaments occurred. The first thing I needed to do was establish some criteria for how to rate these players. Much easier to do in the later decades, but in these first few years when things weren't as established, much, much harder. With there being some little pop-up tournaments that people dominated in their own region, I had to discard them as counting. In order to establish the best player from the decade, then they needed to be playing against the best players all around. What's the best way to make that happen? Money. In 1979, Whammo hosted a disc golf tournament called the $50,000 Tournament, boasting its $50,000 payout in the title. This tournament required you to qualify through one of its 72 qualifiers. No world championships back in the 1970s, so this is the closest option. Plus, when you look at the payout, no tournament would compare for quite a while. The winner of the 1979 Whammo 50K would be deemed the best player in the decade. Tom Kennedy and John Connolly would tie in regulation. They would play a sudden death playoff where Tom Kennedy would win. This win compared to the second place would be $5,000 difference. Kennedy takes home 10K for winning, as well as being the best player in the decade. For the 80s, the PDGA World Championship wasn't established until 1982. That means for the 80s, only eight world championships occurred. A lot of other tournaments were beginning to rise up at the time, just none of them major championships. The only staple major championship in the decade were the PDGA Worlds. I say PDGA because a lot of other tournaments were calling themselves the world championships as well. I collected the winners of all the events, those being the bigger tournaments that most of the top players were playing in. Those would include the World Flying Disc Championships, the World Flying Disc Federation Championship, and the IFA Disc Championship. Some of those tournaments only happened a couple times, so if you won one of those events, I deemed you a point. If you won a PDGA Major, I deemed you three points. In 1982, Harold Duvall would win the first PDGA Major event. He would repeat in 1985 as well, being the first player to do so. Out of the eight PDGA Worlds held in the decade, Duvall would lead the race with winning two of them. He did not win any of the other one-point events I listed. The only player that came close to Duvall was Sam Ferens. He won Worlds in 1984 and also won a World Federation title. Other than that, everyone was kind of dominating their own region. Harold Duvall, two world titles under his belt, was the best disc golfer in the 1980s. This decade was the easiest to figure out by far. In the 1990s, there were 11 major titles. In 1999, the USDGC first major event was hosted. With that and 10 worlds, I could determine the best player of the decade. Easy peasy, because Ken Climo won 10 of the 11 major events held. He won every single world title from 1990 to 1998, then won the first USDGC major event. Ron Russell would take down the 1999 world title, barely beating Climo, who took second place. Figured I would give him honorable mention for being able to stick with the Climo King. I mean pure domination in the decade. He won plenty of other stuff, don't get me wrong, but there's no way someone was going to catch him if he won 91% of the major titles. Ken Climo, the best disc golfer in the 90s by far. Now this is where disc golf gets interesting. In the 2000s, disc golf starts to grow, tours are established, major championships start popping up. Really good events and really good money starts being funneled into the sport. In the 2000s, to determine who the best player was, I had to start adding some different stats since there were other events. In the 2000s, if you won a major, you get three points. A national tour was established, so if you won one of those events, you get one point. Alongside those stats, you now have the money list that can help influence just how good the players were overall. So I collected the wins, the money, added them up to give each player a value. Now the money was just used as a tiebreaker more or less, to give us a better understanding of how the decade as a whole went for those players. Every year in disc golf seems to be different when it comes to major championships. In the 2000s, the European Open and European Major were added, as well as the Japan Open and the Players' Cup. These majors made it so that I could determine who the best player was by quite a bit. So with the combination of those and national tour events, here's what we have. David Felberg. He won 5 major titles, 12 national tour events. His money earnings added up to $214,302. That is roughly $645 an event. I granted him 27 points. Barry Schultz won 5 majors as well, but he won 17 national tour events. 
his money earnings added up to $254,664. That's about $1,122 per event. I granted him 32 points. The winner in my book, just like in the decade prior, but this one was much closer, Ken Climo. He won eight major titles, 12 national tours, and had a money list of $221,843. That was roughly $1,115 an event. That's 36 points in total. Now, if I granted Schultz more points for making more money, it wouldn't be enough to catch Climo. Eight major events, that was the key. That's including world titles, USDGC titles, and a European Open title. Ken Climo, back-to-back -back decades, is the best player. Now, even more than the past decade, we start to see the diversity growth over the sport. In 2016, the Disc Golf Pro Tour is established. National Tour events, Pro Tour events, even more major events. All of these can help us determine who the best player is. Now, for the first part of the decade, it was a toss-up, but I wanted to mention Will Schustrich. He won three major titles and two national titles. He didn't get much done in the later part of the decade, but since he was a top player at the start, I figured I would mention him. Then we have Ricky Wysocki. In 2011, Ricky wins his first major, one of six that he would win in the decade. Six majors, 14 national tour events, and 10 pro tour events. That's a really good resume, but for second place. I don't need to do a point system for this decade because Paul Macbeth is the heavy favorite. Macbeth would win 15 major titles. That's a little under half of the major events held. 36 major events, Macbeth wins 15 of them. He also won 22 national tour events, 13 pro tour events, and a pro tour finale. Yeah, Macbeth dominated. Ricky was definitely second, but Paul was first by quite a bit. Best player in the 2010s, Paul Macbeth. Now for this decade so far, we have an interesting discussion. Just three years of disc golf have occurred, one of them not really counting due to COVID. With that being said, I imagine most of you guys have been able to watch for the past three years more so than for the last few decades. These are our players. These are the guys who got me into the sport. I didn't watch disc golf before the pandemic, but I certainly do now. I have stats. I picked the top three guys according to those stats, but the eye test matters. What you think matters too. So I'm gonna give you the stats, which are remarkably close. Then you tell me who is the best player of our decade. I will post down in the comments my decision. Make sure you do too. And if it's not one of these three players, then I'm excited to see your reasoning. Major event win is three points. Pro tour and national tour count as one. Silver series counts as half a point. Chris Dickerson has two major titles, one Pro Tour win, and two Silver Series wins. That gives him eight points. Riku Isaki has zero majors, six Pro Tour, one National Tour, and three Silver Series wins. That gives him 8.5 points. Paul McBeth has one major win, four Pro Tour, and one National Tour win. That gives him eight points. Now you tell me who the best player in our decade is.